And thanks for coming back. Joining us for our first conversation is the 13th Senator, Mr. Osmani Salas, and Media Relations Officer of the NGO Steering Committee, Ms. Foyla Salam. Good morning to you both. Welcome to Open Your Eyes. Thank, Thank you for being here. Thank you, Foyla, for coming all the way from Punta Gorda and, being, and joining us for this conversation. No problem. So I know that you are very, um, you know, condensed for time this morning, so let's jump into it. Tell us about um, your new position, how you're settling in, um, any kind of uh, objectives that you have going into this new role. Sure, sure. Uh, but I just want to start by making a little correction. Okay. Uh, Ms. Foyla Salam is our interim chair of our oh. Belize Network of NGOs. Oh, okay. So, um, right. and, and media relations still. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so a bigger job, a bigger <laughs> job. She, wears multiple she, hats. she accepted the interim chair role for, okay. an, for another six months. Oh, okay, uh, as great. we <clears throat> put, everything in, put everything in order. But mm -hmm. it, it's been interesting. It's yeah. been an interesting ride, if I could call it that, up to now. Monday was, was my first Senate session. Mm -hmm. And um, it also served as an orientation to me, I must say, yeah. because I never did get a formal orientation. I, I had a weekend to read up on my standing orders and mm -hmm. and on the bills that were to that, that were that were to be tabled and discussed and mm -hmm. and then I showed up <laughs> and that's where I got my orientation. Wow. Actually, um, I, I must thank Pastor you know Pastor Rock, you know Senator Rock, who was the first there and I was the second and and he gave me a quick five minute orientation <laughs> and I really appreciated that. Oh, um, okay. And and then and then there it was so. Uh, as I said, a first time for me, mm -hmm. um, and 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 um, it was interesting for me to see how the veterans did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's it's one thing I found out it's one thing to read their standing orders, mm -hmm. and it's another thing to be there yeah. and to see how they did it. So, I actually learned a lot that day, and wow. and, and thankfully I was able to contribute as well. Oh, okay. With the weight of the issues that were presented before upper parliament on Monday, do you believe? That it was baptism by fire for you? Well, certainly, <laughs> <laughs> certainly. Um, but look, I have I have to say that I really appreciate um, our steering committee. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even before the, the session, they had they had told me, and the idea was that they would be available at any time because um, I mean, this is not about one person. This is about a community, and we have a steering mm -hmm. committee. And so it was uh, it was tested, and I must say that it it worked. Um, you know, I, 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 I said to a friend just, just last night that um, nowadays, I, I've always believed that, that to say that you're busy is, is not an excuse. Mm -hmm. Even more no, mm -hmm. yeah. because everybody's busy. Yeah. But even so, um, our steering committee members are always um, available. Um, and I could reach them at any time, and that came, came forward and other members in our community. So um, actually that was very helpful in my preparation mm -hmm. because it, I mean, I, I don't think it's possible for one person to have a good grasp of all the issues, right? Yeah. And that's not the idea. So yeah, it was very helpful to have a community of NGOs and people mm -hmm. that you could reach out depending on the issue. <coughs> now for, for us watching this process come to fruition, certain aspects for it seem to be uh, theoretical in a sense but now we're dealing in a situation where it has now become reality and the function of the steering committee and the the interim chair is one where you guys are basically the guide for the representative in senate what are some of the the issues that you guys have come up with in terms of uh subsequent uh senate meetings where the good senator here would have to present on your behalf i think from the moment we were informed this process was going to happen we basically went into action mm -hmm. and i have to also repeat what the senator was saying that we do have a great team of people mm -hmm. and this is teamwork and from the beginning like i said the steering committee which was initially headed by janel chanona and osmani salas had had kind of transformed as things went along and the biggest um, thing for us has been communication. And thankful, we're thankful that we have the internet <coughs> and the phone to do that. Because mm -hmm. quickly, um, as, man, as Manny said, the WhatsApp is mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's been a very um, effective form for us to share ideas, to think out loud and see how we can formulate uh, an action plan or a strategy moving ahead. And we've also had meetings with our community as well. We've had 
a, a recent meeting last week, um, the 24th of January, where we gathered to meet with the larger NGO community. Because you are mm -hmm. aware, we initially were just the NGOs and standing community <coughs> that were meeting. Um, last week, we met together. There were like 20 of us. And new faces came on board, some I have never met before. And so how do you forge a relationship with these new comers mm -hmm. to our circle, so to speak? And I have to say the discussion was very good, um, very excellent. Um, we met our objective, which, which was really to <coughs> come up with a terms of reference for the basis of a contract between the NGO community and our senator. Mm -hmm. Because if we want to be clear, he, everybody needs guidelines whenever you come to a new role. Yeah. Like I said, it's new for us. And so it was really interesting that within an hour and a half, we were able to come up with a terms of reference for the senator, mm -hmm. and everybody agreed. Mm -hmm. There was robust discussion. <laughs> I learned certain things as I'm going along as well, protocol. I'm mm -hmm. not really big on protocol. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah. um, a, a good eye-opener for us. And I think so, bit by bit, mm -hmm. we're ticking off the boxes that we need to do. So already we have a guideline that um, governs how the senator behaves, mm -hmm. um, how the communication occurs. The next step for us now is how do we engage the NGO community that have a diverse array of issues yeah. regarding um, civil society and, and community in Belize. Mm -hmm. And I think that for us, slowly we're developing a way. And <coughs> for instance, we already have a Facebook. Mm -hmm. We have a 13 senator um, email that we refer to. And even that, I mean, we got a, a feedback from the wider community that Main when you send out an email, like everybody responds, so you have like a hundred response to one question. And so, okay. it, so part of that is a learning process. Mm -hmm. But um, what we requested last week was that the newcomers basically send us a very short summary mm -hmm. of what work they're involved in. Yeah. And going forward, we want to also develop a, like a, almost like an advisory council that makes up that is made up from those um, community mm -hmm. because we're mindful mm -hmm. at the moment that the steering committee is predominantly the environmental NGOs. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the ones to be very active. Yeah. And so we don't want that to reflect what mm -hmm. we are about. It's mm -hmm. not just the environment that's, that's of concern in Belize. We have health, we have the elderly, we have the youth, Children. we have animals yeah. apparently yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a huge, and, and it's a huge diverse, um, it's a diverse basket. <laughs> basket yeah. and Whenever, and, and this is our spokesperson, this is the yeah. person who basically is the, the, the step to policy making. Mm -hmm. And that is really why we're here. You know, how can we be a part of a policy that will promote good behavior yeah. among the citizens mm -hmm. of Belize? Essentially, you know, that's, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. after, after waiting nine years, mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible how much has happened in the last two months, in particular, just this month, that yeah. right, January that just yeah. ended. And wh what I really liked of the meeting last week that uh, Furler referred to is, uh, it was actually democracy in action. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, at its, at its roots, mm -hmm. because of the, all the NGOs that were there, mm -hmm. and a good number were represented, mm -hmm. we voted on everything, every major decision, there was a vote. Yeah. And, and I'm glad that instead of just a simple majority, mm -hmm. uh, we, we were able to achieve consensus. Yeah. And there was a proposal and a, or a motion and a counter motion and a, a counter motion to the counter motion. <laughs> it was interesting to see it in action. Yeah. But we, we, you know, we came up to agreements. And, and yes, uh, as Farella mentioned, I have a terms of reference that we are about to finalize. Yeah. Um, that sets the stage not only for me, but for whoever else will be the senator after me. And whoever will be a replacement in the eventuality that f for a Senate session I cannot attend for whatever reason. So yeah. we have, um, and, and I must thank our our counterparts um, um, in the so-called so social partners, mm -hmm. the other senators from civil society that, mm -hmm. that have been very open mm -hmm. with us, yeah. have yeah. shared information. So we really didn't have to start from scratch. And, and, and I must also mention, and I think it's a very good start, that even though five of us vied for the senatorial post, mm -hmm. um, we all get along. Mm -hmm. That's good. All of them were there. Mm -hmm. uh, all the NGOs were represented. Thank mm -hmm. you. And, and it, but it shows, we, we vied for it. You know, one came on top, and now we have one, one way forward. And in terms of the way forward, Isani, um, uh, that, that, that will be an, an interesting challenge, but mm -hmm. one that we, must, that, that we must do, that we must meet, um, is, is to 
As I've said from the very beginning, we, we need to set to establish like a strategic direction yeah. for the community because as Ferla said, we're so diverse, yeah. cover so many areas, but the one thing that unites us mm -hmm. and it's captured right in the NGO legislation, mm -hmm. it's we're all geared towards sustainable human development yeah. in the different things that we do. So in essence, you can say that's a goal. Now we need to sit down and decide. Mm -hmm. And within our community, we have people who have actually offered mm -hmm. to help with strategic planning discussions oh, and things great. like that. So that, that, I think, is one of the major things we want to do. This is what forward. I'm impressed by the most. In terms of any organization who has representation <clears throat> in the House of Senate, this is the most open we've seen any of these organizations and the mechanics of getting things done. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the business community that's represented, you have the, the unions, the churches, the government and the opposition. But we've <coughs> never really had an inside look at how things work in terms of how some of the positions are formed and mm -hmm. what have you. This is the most open and transparent. I've seen it as a reporter and as a, as a Belizean citizen, first of all. This is the first time I'm seeing how certain people are able to, or certain groups are able to come together, mm -hmm. how they form a position on something and how they are able to execute. Well, I, I want to share very briefly, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, right, Farrell, I'm sure will we'll, we'll add, but um, you know, th th that is the same reason, very same reason why when I've been invited, like I was invited to this, mm -hmm. to this show, mm -hmm. um, I immediately said, somebody from the steering committee should come along because I'm not representing myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was nominated by one of the NGOs, two of the NGOs actually. It's about actually. being a part of it's a team. Exactly, exactly. And the steering committee has an important role to play. Mm -hmm. So the, the senator may be the spokesperson, yeah. mm -hmm. but we have a community mm -hmm. and our steering committee plays an important role. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask a, kind of like a devil's advocate question because the general idea for a lot of people is that, oh, there's just a 13th senator to balance the, the power in, in the Senate. How do you shake that kind of... I guess pessimistic outlook on what your role is there is established for. No, but 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 actually the way you put it, that is a positive thing mm -hmm. to to balance um, you know the things in the Senate, yeah. um, because as 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 a leader for government business, Senator Hall said uh, when he welcomed me to the Senate, yeah. um, and and um, and a couple other senators yeah. um, from both sides of the political aisle, they said that. Uh, now they expect the, the discussions, the debate to be, to be richer. Mm -hmm. Now nobody should take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. Because for the first time in the Senate, the non-government senators, the idea is that both sides, the, 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 govern, the, the senators representing the government now and the senators representing the government in waiting, mm -hmm. they, they need to come up with very good, solid arguments. Yeah. Uh, 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 they are the ones that present and, and, and the ones that, 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 would, that would counter or, or, would, um, uh, or would debate it. And then the ones from civil society actually have, mm -hmm. if I could call it the luxury, to think without you know, partisan political lenses, right? Mm -hmm. We see it from our perspective. And, and that is what I like about our role, mm -hmm. in that we, we don't see it from red or blue. Mm -hmm. yeah. We see it from the merits of the legislation or the motion how it will impact the country, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and therein is how, is how the, contrib the uh, contribution we will make. Mm -hmm. And to echo what, was, uh, what um, Isani was saying, I think our role in this whole process mm -hmm. from a historical and a national perspective is that we are enriching debate on democracy. Mm -hmm. We are actually maturing, if I may say so, as a young country. I was here previously and one of the things that really struck me about what we were talking about was that so often in Belize we always take criticism as a negative. Mm -hmm. We never see it as a feedback on how we can improve mm -hmm. our behavior, yeah. how we can improve our system <coughs> and our policies. And so I prefer to see the other way, that we are positive to this democratic process. And it doesn't mean what people have been saying that we're going to hold government to ransom. No, it's not that. I mean, far from that. I think we, as members of civil society, have seen that we could possibly chart a different way forward. Yeah. And, you know, that's what we want. We want a healthy, healthy democracy, and healthy democracy has to promote debate mm -hmm. from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll, yeah. Yeah, that, that's basically and, it. And we'll be reaching out. I mean, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, we reached out. 
we reached out to, to four senators mm -hmm. um, um, from the government side, from the opposition side, from the civil society side, just, just to engage them, you know, talk uh, you know, to them about what they see as the important issues. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, and later on today, we'll, we'll be meeting with, with the prime minister and we'll be meeting with the leader of the opposition. But, uh, you know, court is a visit, but yeah. the, the idea is to let them know that we are partners. We are partners in the development of the country and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, in, the, and in the debate that must, must be had, right? Mm -hmm. Here's a question that <clears throat> a lot of people would want to ask that remains a bit unanswered. <coughs> this entire process about two weeks ago when you were elected to become the 13th senator, in your uh, address to the media after having been elected, you mentioned being able to unite the NGO community in terms of one movement, one way forward. And this would also include those NGOs that were not necessarily in good standings, being able to bring them up to par in order for them to be on the same playing field as some of the established and good standing ones. Where are we with that? What is the outlook going forward with respect we're, we're to that? We're working on that. And again, that came up, I think that took up almost a quarter to a half of the time that we had last week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a real concern. And, and again, um, it, it basically boiled down to people not knowing where to go mm -hmm. was one issue. And we um, reminded them of what, what, of what they can do regarding that. But the second thing was also the, the audit. That's a requirement. The financial, the financial report... Yeah. And it has to be an audit, it just can't be an accountant signing mm -hmm. off. That proved to be a real big um, hurdle Turtle. for many of the smaller NGOs. And so going forward, I think um, the discussion basically was centered on perhaps we have to look at making um, suggestions for perhaps increasing the threshold from 25,000 to something that's more relevant because I think it's been mm -hmm. a, a while since that that act was passed <coughs> and now here we are looking at it so i think definitely that's on the table that we as a community will have to lobby for that change because it should not be right mm -hmm. that you basically disenfranchise a huge mm -hmm. sector of our community mm -hmm. so going forward it is in our best interest as a steering committee to come up with a finite plan as to how we're going to go about making sure that that is not a stumbling block for mm -hmm. many of our, men, for our smaller <coughs> NGOs. Because that has been one of the criticisms from the detractors. Mm -hmm. They argue, well, look, only a handful participated in the process because so many other NGOs were essentially left out in the cold because they were not able to present certain documents that would uh, accredit them in a sense for them to be able to participate. Yeah, you know, that, 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 that is one of the interesting challenges that we have. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and as Farla said, we will need to find a way. And, and there are different options. At the meeting itself um, that we had last week, you know, one of the members approached me with an idea. He's, he, you know, he's an accountant, very senior in experience, with an idea on how to do that and help the small NGOs. But mm -hmm. why I say it's interesting and challenging it, it, and also necessary is that as a community, we will be advocating constantly, you know, tirelessly for government, for improved governance, for, for, for more transparency, better accountability. And if we are to fight for that, lobby for that, advocate for that, we need to show that ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, so therein lies the challenge mm -hmm. where some of our NGOs, because of, 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 of the scale of the operations, they might not be able to afford it. Well, we need to see look at the different options on how to get them there, right? Either by, by, by advocating to increase the threshold or, or seeing how we can pool the smaller ones and, and, and find help for them. And there are, there are entities out there, we've learned, that offer non-profit support in that type of thing, like, like artists for smaller non-profits or for, or for charity organizations. So we will be exploring all those options because we want them to be more in uh, integrally engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, at the meeting last week, we had NGOs both in good standing and not in good standing, yeah. and they all had a say. They all contributed to the discussion. Mm -hmm. But I think I want to echo what, um, I don't know what you call it, Senator oh, constantly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so new, you know. But um, I think we need to echo <clears throat> the sentiment that we are governed by an NGO act. Mm -hmm. 
and we must comply with the requirements of the NGO Act. Mm -hmm. It is not us necessarily who are disenfranchising the mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. So like, like what he said, you know, there is a bar that we have to be at at all time. And it's important because when we look at um, the recent amendment, one of the things that was suggested was that it was only NGOs um, who are registered mm -hmm. and that, that can participate in any NGO activity. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, not only do we have to be registered, but we also have to comply with the annual requirements, mm -hmm. which are those two things, mm -hmm. so that no one can come and poke a hole into what we're doing and say, oh, but look at them. Yeah. You know, they're hypocrites. Mm -hmm. They want us to be mm -hmm. uh, transparent and open, but they themselves are right. breaking the law. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's breaking the law. And yeah. so this is where we started from. The position <coughs> of the NGOs from the beginning that were in good standing was that this is the small group that we have to begin with, mm -hmm. but we definitely want to be more inclusive and mm -hmm. certainly all of our policies and our actions are looking at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Senator, I know that time is running out very quickly, but before you go, can you tell us a little bit about the other things on your immediate agenda? I know you're doing a couple of meetings with, you know, courtesy visits and uh, familiarizing with the, stand, the standing orders. Anything else on your immediate agenda? Well, uh, you know, in addition to, to, the, to the courtesy visits today, mm -hmm. uh, which I consider very important, uh, yeah. we, we want to to demonstrate to the to the leaders in government mm -hmm. and, and, and in our political system mm -hmm. what we are about, that we are not about just giving trouble, needless trouble. We are, we are about being an integral part of the discourse and the discussion and the mm -hmm. debate and, and the development of the country as we go forward. Uh, but um, I, I've always said, and we've, you know, so it's just to reiterate, that a first order of business for us has been to organize our community, as, yeah. as we have been saying. So mm -hmm. that, 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 that is a, it's a pretty big program that we have ahead. Mm -hmm. And we have to lay out the, like an action plan on, on how we will carry it forward. Okay. Um, um, I, I'm happy to, to report that most of our NGOs have already been contributing financially mm -hmm. to, to the Belize Network of NGOs account so that we can, because, you know, we have to pay for venue and yeah. refreshments mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they, they have been there, they have been, en they have been engaged and they have been supportive, yes. So I think that for now, that's a big enough program already. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, well, we want to thank you so much for being here and thank you for your time, for coming all the thank way you from well. where thank you me. have. And we look forward to seeing great things from the and NGO We're happy community. to come back. Definitely. <laughs> we will invite you as time goes the public on. <laughs> <laughs> sure. right, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, we will go take a short break and be back to, to have our feature on the Red, the Red Cross. So stay tuned.